All right, thank you very much for being here. I can't believe it's raining. Let me see the weather report last year. I was so happy that it rained, sorry, last week. You know, it got all out of the way, so it's gonna be sunny all week long, and then maybe a little rain Monday, maybe a little Monday night, maybe some overnight. So I don't know what we're gonna do with lunch. It may be creative, but we can have lunch in here. Thanks, Deborah. okay. All right, so we're planning on having a lot of fun today. I'd like to acknowledge many, many people that made this happen over the last year, recruiting you, sending out flyers, talking to you. Uh, mostly, I would like to give the biggest shout out to Antonella Duhl in the back. Ah! She's so busted. <clears throat> Tirelessly putting up with endless details. She did a great job. And I'm not sure if I really have time to thank everybody. If you go to our website, you'll see we have this great uh, site of all about us, and we have this great group of internal advisors that have been meeting once a month ever since last year's Food Summit to come up with ideas like this. So this is the culmination of all those ideas. We've got Lauren Rosenberger, who just joined us a couple weeks ago. She's been working 100% time on this, just about. We have some great, generous sponsors that we're really proud of. So between the provost and the seven deans, we got $45,000 raised for this event, and 11th Hour Project, and Neutralite Health Foundation. So, and the Woods Institute, which doesn't quite fall under the deans. So great sponsorship for this. We'd like to thank Stanford Dining and Hospitality, and <clears throat> Darren Evans and his whole crew, and Angie, who helped us with the website. All right, so our program today is I get to give uh, a few welcoming remarks here followed by the Frances Moore LaPay. If you saw her, she's right in front. <laughs> then we have these great panel discussions. This is going to be very different than last year. I don't know, how many of you were here last year just out of curiosity? Thank you for coming again. Very different. Last year was talking heads, and this is going to be interactive panel discussions. See how it goes. We're going to take a networking break from 10 to 10.30. 10.30, 11.30, 11.30, 12 We have two different panels and an amazing lunch, which remains to be seen where it will be served. Um, in theory, we had tables all outside because it was gonna be so beautiful, but there's plenty of room in here. Okay, now for those networking opportunities for 10 to 10.30 or lunch, I have this idea, I had it last year. I don't know how many of you took, it, took me up on it last year. There's post-its on your tables. And so my idea is to put something provocative on a post-it you have to logistically figure out where the sticky glue is and put it backwards so it sticks off the bottom. Mine says, reforming NIH reductionist scientist, CBPR or wannabe. Anybody figure out what that is? I, I want to be a community-based participatory researcher, and I'm not. Unfortunately, historically, I'm a reductionist NIH-funded scientist. But I have seen the error of my ways, and I am shifting to a more community-based approach. So that's what this is all about. We've invited a lot of community activists today. So our objectives are gonna to be to share some of the things we've done since last year, to continue to develop a learning community uh, across the disciplines on campus, and with those great innovators of you that are out there listening today. Uh, in the, after the lunch, there's actually some smaller groups that are gonna be meeting around specified topics, and they're gonna to try to generate the next set of topics to follow up on for Food 3 next year. So hopefully we'll have Food 3, and we'll tell you what great ideas got generated from two to four today. And of course, there's a great program tonight. I'll get to that at the end. So a little background here. Last year, this was a little bit of a hypothesis. Uh, we kept finding foodies all around campus, and we wondered, could it be true could there be foodies in all seven disciplines, all seven schools across campus? And there were. We found great speakers last year, for those of you who came, and they highlighted what they thought were big food problems, what the solutions would be, who else they needed on campus to resolve these, and, and some of these people remain connected. I thought we had a great program last year, and I'm not gonna go through all their names. Many of them are back today. But in fact, it worked. We got everybody here. We had great representation. I mean, the other hypothesis was, would they come? We think they will come if we hold it. And this place was packed last year like it is this year. We were sold out a few days before the thing last year, and we're 
either sold out or closed this year, even though we didn't charge anything. Okay, we're full. <clears throat> so this was one of my themes last year when I opened up. It just seemed like with all this intellectual power and all these different disciplines, it was almost like with great power comes great responsibility, but we shifted a little thinking with great resources comes great responsibility and opportunity. It seems like there's an amazing amount of opportunity on this campus to interact, interact with the incredible Bay Area that we have going on here. So we talked about the intersection of human health and the health of the environment, how all this was coming together as a perfect storm. We've got obesity and food insecurity and food safety issues, climate change, animal rights, animal welfare. A lot of interesting things going on, very complex. It really, it really isn't any one discipline that's gonna resolve this. So we all need each other, I think. But last year was very much focused on academics. In fact, we really did not actively uh, recruit the community to come into this at all. And so this Food Summit too is a direct follow-up to that. We actively sought out people, innovators, uh, leaders in the community, and they are all around you, and maybe they are you. So why did we even have this Food Summit too? Well, you may be shocked to know that even after last year's Food Summit, there are still a few challenges that remain. <laughs> Stunning though it may seem, all these talking heads up here did not simply walk away from the podium and all the challenges evaporated. No, in fact, they're still alive and well, and uh, they still need to be addressed. So everybody should have a big collective sigh and gasp here. <sighs> it's overwhelming, isn't it? But it's not. I'll tell you what's not overwhelming is who is in this room today. You're going to hear about full circle farm this morning, this amazing mecca of a place just 10 miles south down in Sunnyvale. You're going to hear about Deborah Dunn's class working in collaboration with Matt Roth. A team of design school students worked on uh, a program to reduce meat consumption in dining halls and tested it, and Ariana is going to tell you about her results today. And we've got, we've flown some people in from far and wide to talk about redefining hospital food. That's you, Frank. Sorry, you know, I just Googled that. It was on images. I should, probably should have asked you, but I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. I think it's a great picture. Okay, now those are some of the speakers. Now get ready for this, because if you look around you, you may not have noticed, I, known I was going to do this. Sorry, Amy, if you're here already, but I Google image several of the others of you. If you look around at your table, some of these people might be with you. At your table, Veggie Lucian. Zenobia Barlow signed up to come today from Center for Eco Literacy. Bob Scowcroft, actually don't think he's here yet, I think he said he'd come at 10, uh, from the Organic Farming Research Foundation will be here today. Revolution Foods is here today. Do you see any of these people at your tables? Look around and see who's at your table. Jamie Smith from Santa Cruz City Schools. Jamie, I don't know if you arrived yet, I haven't met you yet. Anyway, this is all very exciting, and what this is all intended to lead to is to work with community groups doing innovative stuff, pair them up with researchers, and in the long term, think about building an, a new interdisciplinary program on campus that looks at these food challenges. Now, we've already got our first start. Heather and Willie, I don't know if you're here yet. Ah, there we go, over here. And Bruce and Lynn. So, we've started uh, raising some funds that are going to generate pilot funding for pursuing some of these ideas. There's a couple other potentially generous donors in the audience that are going to continue to contribute to this. So we'll put some money behind some of these projects, which I think will move them forward. The things you're going to see today, we did for free. Next year, we're going to have some funding behind it. Thank you very much to the Blackie Foundation family. Blackie Family Foundation. Now, I need to be careful not to step on any toes here. There really is food on campus already. The Food Security and Environment Group does some excellent work, uh, and the Woods Institute does some of this too. But really, uh, Julie Kennedy did a nice job of positioning this for me. The FSC does mostly agricultural systems, and what we think we're talking about today may be more along the line of food systems. So we want to keep that great food logo that we got. We're going to brand that. That seems to be very popular, our logo. So we can do school food, hospital food, prison food, 
food bank food, food justice, foods in every one of those, right? So we get to keep using that cool logo no matter which one we do. So that's, that's pretty much what today is about, trying to connect with some of the leaders and innovators in our community and match them up. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.